Um, I just want to go into this idea of randomness, of indeterminism. Um, it's 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 mind-bogglingly perplexing how how um, how you know otherwise very brilliant people have you know have you know proposed this um, this hypothesis. The idea is some physicists, and, and, and my personal guess is that, you know, these, a lot of these physicists like Niels, Niels Bohr, Werner Heisenberg, they weren't just physicists. They were interested in the fundamental nature of reality, and I'm sure they, um, they um, kind of like had an interest in this question of whether the, the human will is free or not. So, and, and that's what I, what I think kind of le leads people to make, you know, these kinds of like conclusions that are just like, they're just internally in inconsistent, they're incoherent, they just make no sense. The idea is like randomness, okay? Now, sometimes we understand randomness as, um, as you know, you just like, you have a deck of cards, pick a card at random, okay? That's, that's like apparent randomness. And because I say that because like, what, what some people mean, what these physicists <laughs> mean, um, and what's actually taught in most um, phys physics textbooks um, at the college level that, that's beginning to change, you know, based on this Copenhagen interpretation that says that things aren't caused, is that, that things happen at random. Um, but the reality is that, like, you know, think about the concept of randomness, of something happening that's not caused. It doesn't make sense. There, you know, there's a cause to everything, okay? Things don't just like, I mean, because think about it. Let's say something just happened, okay? Like, let's say a particle, you know, came out of nowhere. Okay, well, still, you know, that particle is there the moment before it wasn't. That's a causal process. You can't say that that was random. And it's interesting because, like, one of the... Um, one of the, um, a lot of times <laughs> the physicists and other scientists, they say to themselves, well, I know everything that's happening in this system. I know everything that's happening, like, for example, with radioactive decay. They can't, you know, for, a, for a, a, an isotope that has a half-life, that you know, it'll decay at a certain amount of time. They can't predict exactly when a single particle will decay. Okay, they can't predict that. Um, and so, like, for years and years and years, they've said, well, since we can't predict it, it can't have a cause. It can't be random. And, you know, I, ho I hope you can understand the illogic of that. But the reason I'm bringing this up now is because there was actually a, a study done by a couple of um, professors at Stanford and Purdue that was published, I think, last September, October, that actually, you know, they had thought this radioactive decay was completely random, uncaused and all, and all of a sudden they find a correlation between activity on the sun and seasonal changes in the rate of um, radioactive decay. So the idea is like there, there have been various processes in physics and in nature where I think it's an, an, um, scientific arrogance that leads certain scientists to say, well, we know everything that's happening here and since we can't predict behavior, it must be random. And so, like, what happens in history, there have been cases like that, and I've got to do some research on it because they don't come to mind um, right now. But what happens is that um, in those cases, later, it might be a decade later, like, you know, several decades later, like this thing with radioactive decay, they find, oh, there are, there are causes. You know, we, we didn't see everything. So that's, so the idea is that, like, there is no randomness. There, there's no thing, everything has to be caused, okay? There's, you know, um, another, another way how, how this got confused was, like, this guy, Simon Laplace, um, very famous mathematician, I think he was a phys physicist also, um, he came up with the statement of determinism. He said, if we had like, um, if we knew the position of, of every particle in the universe, and um, with that knowledge, if we could like compute it, we, we could know both the past and the present. Nothing would be hidden from us. And what confused people is that because of this Heisenberg uncertainty principle, because we can't, you know, um, know the position and momentum of a particle simulta simultaneously. And even beyond that, because we can't know everything in the universe, we can't naturally predict everything in the universe with, with precision. 
But that led people to believe that um, in such a thing as indeterminism, which really can be defined as randomness at, or chance. And again, e the way, whatever term you want to use, randomness, indeterminism, chance, basically what they're saying is that things are uncaused, okay? And um, sometimes people define randomness as unpredictability, but that's kind of like a, a sleight of hand because then when you ask them what unpredictability is, it's as well, it's not caused, whatever. At least that's what um, the physicists um, will say. So, um, all right, so again, now bringing us back to free will. If, if the universe exists axiomatically, if, you know, call a change is the fundamental process in the universe without which nothing could happen, you know, there'd be no movement, and if causality is necessary to all change, then causality is the fundamental process in nature. And so if you have everything having a cause, which that's what it means, that means every one of our decisions has a cause, and you know that cause has a cause, and that cause has a cause, and that, that is the way, that's the best way, perhaps, to understand why free will is impossible. I'm not really